Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, we're going to be using 3D Coat here to create this automotive design. Uh, you can see um, it's a pretty good shape and I'm not an automotive designer but you can see we can get some fairly good results with very little work. Um, we don't go into much uh, detail in this video regarding an, any details on the actual bodywork itself. It's all pretty basic, just to keep it simple. Uh, we may uh, do another uh, video later where we can start to look at a little bit more specifically. I do go over a couple of the tools uh, to create some of these details on the front and, and on the back here, but it's, it's, it's mainly a tutorial based on the the shapes that you can see here. Okay, so without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is start with the wheel of this concept car. So I'll use the voxel sculpting um, option and I'll just open an empty scene which is this icon here to the left. So whilst that opens up, we'll make sure that we've got our grid checked and the grid is going to be useful just for very very basic uh, measurements again we're not going to do anything too um, too accurate in this it's only a concept and just to get some some basic forms out there so um, that's why the grid is, is going to be useful so to start the wheel I'm going to uh, hit spacebar on my keyboard and this will bring up the primitives button down here which I'll use and then from this list across the top here I'm going to choose this one which is the lathe tool. Now the lathe tool appears like so so I'm just going to zoom in here so we can see what we're doing which is just a, a cylinder at the moment and just move it over to the side and this little checkbox here which is for toggling orthographic and perspective view off. I, I'll, I'll need the orthographic view selected here so you can see we've got no kind of distortion, perspective distortion. So the tool options for the lathe tool is this um, area here and you'll see what happens when I start to pull these points here. So by just tapping onto this line I've added a point and now I start to pull this out and you can see that I start to get this shape. So moving around we can see the shape there. Um, quick tip when you're using um, orthographic view if you hold down shift whilst you are orbiting around the object it'll snap which is why the orthographic is really useful. Um, so continuing we can just keep adding points on here and to get our kind of tire shape. You have to keep looking around just to see if you're happy with that shape, which I am. Um, sorry, the alloy shape, not the tire. And we'll just keep moving around. And if you right click on a point, see how it's gone green there? If I right click the point, you'll see it goes between different modes where it's a sharp point, like so. And you can see the effect it has on there. So it toggles between different spline types and a very hard line like this one. And so that's how you generate your shapes. So you can see here I can pull down the middle of the wheel, I can add another point here, make that a sharp point, add another point here, make that a sharp point, and start to create some sort of alloy wheel shape inside here. The back of the tire, which is this area down here, and if I just rotate this around you can see, um, we're not really interested in this part. However, it is a good thing for you to just try and model something in there. Just, just get it to a point where it's round about where you'd want it to be in the real world if this was a real object. So we could just do something like that. So this is like my cross section of, of my alloy. You can see here, I can just pull this down. Not going to see this back part here, so I'll just drop it down there like so. So I've got this sort of cavity at the back here. 
and we just keep manipulating and trying different designs and different way uh, um, different shapes so for example if you wanted a curved shape here I could possibly move this in or make this come down here to get this nice sweeping um, curved shape inside okay so that's all there is to it it's it's very basic and what you need to do is come up with your own designs or if you want to what I've done here is I've um, got my own curve which I'll just load now so I'll go to my file which is alloy curve and in here we can see we've got a tire curve and an alloy curve select the um, alloy curve and say open and you can see I've already set this one up for you and it adjusts like so alright so that's on the download and I'll put a link in the description below for you to just download this and and get started with it if you've not got um, access to the internet or something where you can download then just try and copy that shape that you can see there uh, using the different right clicks etc that we've discussed earlier okay once that's done and that shape is loaded in then over here in your Vox tree let's just move this over a little bit in the Vox tree make sure that layer is selected and then you're going to just increase the resolution until it says times two and once that's done hit apply change the tool just to deselect the lathe tool and you can see our object there which is all good so again shift on the keyboard whilst orbiting to snap and you can see I've got this sort of rough shape here where I know that my alloy wheel is occupying four grid spaces at this point um, we can do two things we can go ahead and create the tire or we can start to make a shape with this alloy what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my wheel sorted first including the tire so I'll add a new layer like so and again hit spacebar on the keyboard sorry I didn't I pressed the wrong button there I pressed duplicate uh, I'll ha add a new layer there we go and hit spacebar again and this time primitives and this time I'm going to obviously it's reselected that same tool again so that saved me a step and I'm going to load my other curve in which is the tire curve so that gives me this one now the tire curve is slightly smaller so I'm going to use the um, gizmo here and the center square on the inside just to kind of expand that out a little bit and use this one on the end to sort of squash it down and just play with it until I'm sort of happy with the shape there something like that so once that's done again make sure that you have got the same resolution so down over down on the um, Vox tree hit times two to double the size of to double the resolution and hit apply always get in the habit of, of increasing uh, the resolution before you add the object and that way it will come in at the right res for you okay so now I've got two layers here one is the alloy and the other one is the tire now you'll notice that this is a quite a low res object at the moment and this is a really important thing to understand with when dealing with uh, voxels hit the spacebar on the keyboard and come down to this little uh, icon down here which says resample now this gives you an idea um, of how many voxels or how many polygons are inside this tire object so at the moment we're roughly at three and a half uh, three hundred and fifty thousand okay so we'll just leave it at that for now try and keep those figures low because sometimes you can be working away and that thing can creep up to something like 60 million and you're wondering why your, your system's slowing down the, that's the first thing to check hit spacebar resample and check this here and if it's too high 
bring it down and you can see this is kind of like a percentage of the of the figure. You can go up as well and sort of increase that if you want to. Just hit cancel for now. Right, I need to label these so they're a little bit easier to understand. So the I'll just click on the top one here, double click and just call it alloy. And I'll double click on this one and call it tire. At this point I can come over down here to my um, shaders tab and I don't really like this sort of clay look to it. I don't find it very easy to work with. So I'll use this grey one down here to just change the shader. And same for the alloy itself. It's just a little bit easier to, to understand the form. So there you can see I've got my basic tyre ready to go. The next stage is to start working on the alloy itself. You can hide this object if you want to and just zoom in a little bit closer. So the alloy requires us to create some sort of um, cutout shapes inside of this section and it's pretty much the same as what we've done before only this time uh, we're going to use a different tool, the pose tool, and we're going to use from the E panel across here, you can use the 3D um, close spline or what's this one called, the closed spline, any of these ones will do. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a shape from here. So you just start this off by clicking some points down. But what I want to do when I do this is I want to create all my spokes for the alloy at once. And to do that I'll need the symmetry tool. So hit S on the keyboard, which brings up the symmetry panel. Click on the XYZ mirror and choose radial symmetry. Radial order needs to be set to 5. This determines how many spokes, if you like, you're going to create. Obviously, if you want a very complica complex um, alloy, then you'll have to increase this. Um, and that's up to you how, how you want it. For now, I'm just going to go with 5. Now you can see at this point that my cursor has these dots following it around the center point here. Really useful because it's going to allow me now to just create all the spokes in one go. Down in the alpha section here I want to make sure I've got this harder alpha selected and don't forget 3D um, spline tool here is being used so I'm going to just place some points here and here and the, again this is another design um, part where you can add your own designs to this whatever you feel like doing so once I've committed this object then you can see that I can either add more points to it when it go when this circle goes green or I can edit the existing points when it turns blue so now I can edit this one and just reshape. And again, don't try and get too um, uh, too tied up with the design. Just at least at least not when you're starting out, because you, you'll just get really frustrated with it. Just keep things fairly simple, like this one, like this one is at the moment. So again, right-clicking on the points gives you or can give you a much sharper edge, which is something you know. It, that you, that you might be looking for when you're designing this. Okay, so that looks roughly okay to me. So at this point then I will just hit enter on the keyboard, uh, sorry, sorry, yeah, enter on the keyboard and it gives me this here. Now these darker areas are selected areas. So what I'll do is just hit escape to remove that spline so it's not in my way. Control on the keyboard just to orbit around my object. Holding Control and Shift just to pan. And all I want to do now is just move these points around. So I'll start by holding Shift down on my keyboard. And can you see this small area at the end of the arrow? I'll move that, which only moves the gizmo itself. Alt to 
pan around just to check and then using the top arrow here I'll then push down on the selected area to give me this sort of design. Now I'll just back up a step here and do and undo and you can use this option here to smooth the selection out. You notice how it's a little bit um, rough around the edges. That's partly to do with my selection but it's more to do with the resolution of the object. But I'll just hit that once and then go down again. It didn't really make a big improvement but for now that's fine. Okay. So at that point I'll snap to my top view again shift and just to rotate the gizmo by itself and then I'll use this square this time and I can scale inwards, scale outwards, whatever I want to or just generally push this in using the arrow like so. I'll clear my selection to select and that's fine for now. The next stage I'll do is to just clean this up a little bit and I'll do that just by spacebar smooth all and I'll do this a couple of times. It's a good idea for you to sh set up um, keyboard shortcuts for this just to but you won't be able to see me hitting the keyboard on this so to do it manually it gives you a better idea of how many times I'm actually smoothing this object out. Okay so now I've got this shape all I want to do now is cut some holes into this. So it's good practice just to um, do the, repeat the same thing again. This time let's change a tool and use a different tool. So now I'm using the cutoff tool and I'm also going to select um, the spline again and I'll just make some points around here just to cut off some kind of hole in here. Hit escape to drop the tool. The blue circle indicates that you can edit the points. So just wait for my computer to catch up. So I can see that my computer is starting to struggle now so I'm going to check my um, resample size at the moment. Okay, so that will do for now. Let's just wait for the computer. Okay, and then I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard to punch a hole straight the way through there. So now I've got holes carved out of my alloy wheel. So let me just check quickly what my resolution of this object is. As my computer is starting. Oh, it's crept up a little bit, but not too much. And when you're smoothing these out, it's a good idea to sometimes drop the resolution down and then do that same smoothing operation again just to get that molded look on the tire uh, on the alloy sorry okay so you can see how these are sort of, sort of blending in and getting a molded look okay let's bring in the tire itself now you can add as much to this as you really want to it's it's perfectly okay to sort of make a really comp complex design for this but like I said earlier try and keep things fairly simple at least to begin with. Having said that what I will do just on the yellow just very quickly if I get the chance is just to change tool again just so you can see you know just using some different tools here and I'll use this option here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Reduce the size of my cursor. I've still got symmetry on here so I can hold down Alt, sorry, Command, uh, Control, sorry, on the, um, on the Mac and 
that gives me a boolean operation for this sphere tool. So imagine this is a sphere and the sphere is dictated by the size of my cursor here. So if I just undo that, reduce the size down again, you can see I get a smaller um, boolean operation on there. So what I'll do is just undo once more, increase the size, alt click, probably a little bit too big but never mind, then I'll reduce the size and then just click inside to give the impression of some bolts or something of that nature. Just smooth that out. Remember this is only a concept, it doesn't, it's not something that needs to be accurate at all. So at that point I'm quite happy with what I've got and just to finish the alloy section off I'll make sure that the alloy layer is selected, go to my shaders and I can come over here and select one of these nice shader for the alloy, choose the tire and I've got a nice shader here for the tire as well. Okay, so almost there. The last stage I'm going to choose the tire layer again and I'm going to hit S on the keyboard to bring my symmetry panel back up. Hold, um, choose the radial symmetry. This time change the value to 12. You'll see now I get a lot more points on this. And I'm just going to tilt it this way a little bit. Hold down. Um, actually I'm going to uh, just which tool shall I use? I'll just do the extrude tool, change it to a normal pen and I'm just going to make, holding the alt down, I'm just going to make a small indent just in here just to give the impression of a tread on the tire, that's all it needs. Okay, so at this stage you can go and sort of play with different alloy wheels, check out the design of the wheel, are you happy with it? And um, and that's about it really for this section. So the next section we'll look at is um, creating a wheelbase for us to start the bodywork. Okay, so now I've got my alloy and tire. I need to do a little bit of housekeeping here to make my life easier in the next stage. So. Over in the Vox tree section here, you can see how I've got my tire and alloy. What I need to do is parent these together so that uh, one follows the other around. And to do that, I'll just, it makes more sense for the tire, uh, to the alloy to be connected to a tire, because that's just the way that I think about it. So I'll right click on the alloy and change parent to the tire. So now you can see they've just swapped um, order. Tire is now on top and alloy is inset just underneath it to show that it's parented to the tire. The next thing I'm going to do on here is to uh, cache the file because I'm going to be using um, instances of this. So I'll just toggle this little button here which will cache this object and reduce its memory size which means it's a little bit easier for me to deal with. It just degrades the object slightly but it allows me to still see the object in its entirety but it takes a lot less memory for my system. So let's zoom out and I'll cr just pan across so it's Alt and Shift on the keyboard zoom in a little bit. Now you can see here that I've got two squares and my car is roughly going to be um, two and a half to three wheel sizes apart. So I'm going to click the tire um, the tire layer here which is parent which the alloy is parented to. Right click again and this time I'm going to go down to clone and I'll clone an instance. So just let me move this over. You can see here that now I've got an instance 
which is parented as well. So again, just move this out of the way. And I'll move my instance over. So just counting across or using the grid spacing here, then we're just going to do one, roughly two, roughly three, and a half. So we'll just position it there to give me my wheel, uh, the distance between the wheels. If you go online and check out any tutorials, you'll see that there are different um, wheel distance, the distance between wheels varies depending on the model of the car that you're trying to do. So for this one, this is this is fine for me. Okay, with that done, I'm just going to move over here now into a perspective view because these are actually on the floor and we're going to rotate these around. So I will do that. I can, I can do it individually or I can um, parent this one to this one and do it that way but we'll just do it in, um, individually for now. So with this selected here, with the tire selected here, I'm going to go over to here and you can see these rotate. So if I put in 90 degrees for example in this box it rotates it as you can see. It rotates it the wrong way but never mind. So let's just undo that. So there we go. So 90 degrees flips it over so it's standing upright. So let's select the instance and do the same thing. 90 degrees. And there we go. So those two are now in the right place. So what I'll do now is I will parent the instance to this one. Now I need to change my naming convention here because it gets a little bit difficult to understand what's going on. So let me do that first. So we'll call this front tire. And the instance will be called back tire. Let's just remove the extension there. Okay, just makes it easier for us to understand what's going on. So now I'll cl right click on back tire and change the parent to front tire. So now wherever I move the front tire, the back tire will follow. So let's just orbit around, shift to snap so I can see my ground plane and with the front tire selected I'll move up and move both tires at the same time. Put it on the ground plane like so. Okay so now my wheels are orientated in the right, uh, rotated in the right way. I've got a, a wheel space which I'm looking for. So the next stage is to carry on with the body and that's what we'll look at in the next section.